New people entering the market don't care what you think something should cost. As always, before we get going, make sure to hit the like button down below. I want to talk about a concept in collecting and investing that affects almost all of us. It certainly has affected me over the years as well. And this is the concept of price memory, which can cause us as emotional beings to make decisions based on how we think something should be based on our own perceptions and experiences. So let's look at this idea of price memory from a collecting standpoint. When you first enter into a hobby, you start engaging with it. Maybe you buy some things, you sell some things, and you start seeing prices around you. Now, these prices that you are going to start to put into your memory are built from what you see at maybe grad sales locally or what you see on eBay or what you see in Facebook groups, Instagram. These are the prices you see items selling for. You see people buying them and you start to build a basis for what you think items are worth. And obviously, as you begin to learn more and more, you'll see certain prices on certain items and you'll say, oh, that's too much or, oh, that's a really good purchase and you'll buy it because you think it's underpriced based on your own memory of price. But that decision is coming from the specific time frame that you have been engaging in the market. It's impossible for us not to be remembering these prices as we engage in collecting or investing. It's human nature. You're going to do it. Because as you build this basis of price memory, you can start to make good decisions based on what you already know. Of course, the longer you're engaging in investing or collecting something, the better your price memory is going to be. You'll have more experience, you'll have seen more prices, and you'll have a better gauge of the actual ebb and flow that's taking place in the market. So of course, as more time passes, these perceptions that you have of pricing and the items within your hobby or your asset collecting or your investing become locked in your mind. You no longer want to overpay for something that has cost, say, $20 for the last five years. If it goes to 30 or 40, you think to yourself, oh, I'll just be able to buy it for 20 eventually. You develop a certain complacency with what you think games or other collectibles should cost. And I know people who've been in the hobby for a long time now have experienced this with factory sealed games such as Gauntlet Legends on Nintendo 64 or Section Z on NES. These games that seem to have endless supply and you could go buy one whenever you wanted. You locked into your mind that this game costs $200 say and when I want to go buy one, if I want to go buy one, it will always be available for me to buy. And generally that's a pretty safe thing to assume because the collectible hobby actually moves in pretty slow ebb and flows all things considered. You're going to see spikes here when maybe a new game gets announced so Animal Crossing on GameCube goes through the roof. Or you'll see a small dip because maybe Super Mario Sunshine sees a re-release and all of a sudden that game goes down in value. But never do you really see the entire market go up or down. Most things stay pretty stable, all things considered. There are just ebbs and flows that you see within and you respond accordingly. And really, there's always usually time to respond. Enter 2020. And this is where everything changed for a lot of people. All of a sudden, all of these prices and perceptions that you had in your head have been totally changed and flipped upside down. Nothing makes sense anymore. You can sit there and observe the market and think to yourself, everything is overpriced. This is ridiculous. Why are people paying these prices? Do they not know these items used to cost $20 or this used to cost $40? How come people are now paying 80? They're idiots. It's super easy to fall into that trap and think that. Very rarely does something happen where the entire ocean will rise and all boats that are on it just rise with it. It's not even necessarily that there are good fundamentals behind a lot of the items that are rising in price. But as the tide rises, all items are carried with it. And obviously, this doesn't happen often. And that's why it creates so much cognitive dissonance for collectors and investors. Because you believe one thing in your mind and you're seeing a completely different thing take place in front of you. And this is a very hard thing for people to rationalize because you believe something so strongly and then everything changes in an instant. So 2020, for example, had Corona enter and everything that that entailed. Now, obviously, within different hobbies, there were also different catalysts that took place. But the main catalyst that caused all attention to go to these collectible assets was Corona and the stay at home culture that was created. So Corona happens and all of a sudden you have all of these new people entering the market that they otherwise weren't a part of. And this happened in the stock market, this happened in Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, sports cards, video games. This happened in a lot of facets of collecting and investing. So all of these new people enter into the market and all of a sudden you're sitting there thinking, why are all these people paying these outrageous prices for these items that shouldn't cost this much? And in some instances, you will be absolutely correct that people are overpaying because you have more market experience and you have more knowledge of these items and the fundamentals that are actually driving them. On the other side of that, you will also make terrible decisions about not buying something because you're going to have the notion that you missed the boat when you see a price go up and you didn't buy it. Even though that item might still be underpriced in the grand scheme of things and see great appreciation over the next one, two, five years. And this goes back to the first thing I said. These new people entering the market 
don't have any kind of price memory. They don't remember when Gauntlet Legends for N64 was $80 for a brand new sealed copy. They see it for $150 or for $200, maybe more, and they think that's a good price to pay to have a great game factory sealed on the N64. These new people entering are going to have completely different perceptions and ideologies about the market and different experiences too. As a collectible, an asset, a stock, as the interest in it grows and grows and grows, so does the diversity of the people that are looking to buy it. And all these different people who enter have different ideas of prices and what should or shouldn't be expensive. For these people entering, they might see these prices on things that you think are outrageous and they think this is a good affordable purchase because maybe they just want to enjoy it or maybe they want to invest in it or maybe they want to speculate in it. But for whatever reason and whatever experiences they have, they think it's a good price. That doesn't mean that you're wrong, but it means that your price memory might lead you to make a bad decision when you could still purchase it for a reasonable price, but you want to buy it at its rock bottom price that you remember it cost, say, six months ago or one year ago. It's a trap that we all fall into and it's one that can lead us to making very bad investing decisions. This idea of price memory is also why collectibles and assets establish floors. Let's say you were very early into a hobby or stock or you were watching the market and you saw the price was $10. That's where you think it should cost. So you see it go to $20, $30 and all of a sudden you're not a buyer. But then new people enter the market and they see the price at $20 or $30. They start buying and they increase the price to $40, $50 where they say, mm, no, I really don't want to buy at that price. Then again, new people enter and they start buying at $50 and $60 and they increase the price to $70. And then maybe once it sells for $70, they begin backtracking and we start selling for $60 or $50. Well, now those second people who were previously priced out are going to start buying at the $40 and $50 mark because this is what they remember the item should cost. So all of a sudden they saw it go up and now it came back down and they're getting a deal on it because, oh, whoa, this used to be $70. Now I'm getting it for $50. And this leads to the issue of the people at the bottom who are waiting for a market crash or the deep correction because they now have to wait for the first layer of people to stop buying, the second layer of people to get a good deal on the item, and they have to be now the third layer of people who remember the price at a certain point where they feel comfortable comfortable buying again. It's why a lot of things intrinsically cannot go to zero. There will always be someone who believes that it's a good price to buy because that's the price that they remember it at. And this happened for me as well. The biggest shock of price memory for me happened in 2018 or 2019 when WADA Games first started grading games. I've been following the sealed market for years at that point and I had developed certain prices that certain things cost. I was always looking for a deal on factory sealed games because they were always out there and they were always plentiful. I never looked at buying games like Donkey Kong Land 3 or Gauntlet Legends or Hydro Thunder or even Mega Man for N64. I didn't look at any of these very common, very affordable games because I saw them as having a price ceiling and they would always be available at these prices. And then the first instance of this that really stands out to me was a Circle Seal Contra sold for $2,200, I believe it was. And at the time, that was a record price. And of course, nobody wanted to pay that price because we're all working on price memory. This game shouldn't cost this much. Six months ago, it sold for $1,500. How can it possibly sell for $2,200 now? Even though, looking back, buying it for $2,200 was a great purchase. But this comes into the new person entering the market didn't remember Contra being a $1,500 game or a $1,000 game. They saw it for $2,200 and thought, wow, I can have a factory sealed Contra for $2,200. That's a great purchase. Obviously, looking back on history, yes, it was a very good purchase. Price memory is always going to cause you to have this feeling of missing the boat if prices happen to move on you. For example, I will never own stock in Tesla because I emotionally can't buy it anymore. I didn't buy it when it was 200. I didn't buy it when it was 500. I didn't buy it when it was 1,000. I didn't buy it after the stock split. I simply cannot buy it now. And I accepted in my mind that I will not purchase it when I didn't the first time. And a lot of people need to come to that realization where if you are going to let price memory block you from making a new decision, then you also have to be okay with simply never owning something or never investing in it. And in a lot of instances, that could be a very costly decision. Now, I'm not saying all this because I want you to run out and go buy everything at the current price it is. We need to use our own experiences and perceptions to make educated decisions in the market. I'm not disagreeing with that. I just want to bring to the forefront this ideology that you can begin to consider in your own life and your own investing. If you ever think, ah, this is too expensive now, I shouldn't buy it. Make sure you also consider what its future prospects might look like. Even though you might have been able to buy it for $100 a year ago and Today it cost $200. Maybe in a year or two years or three years from now, it might be $500, $800, 
You don't know. Obviously, you have to look at the downside risk of the purchase as well. But the best thing you can do is open your mind to paying more now, even though you could have got it for less later. There are a lot of things in my life that I wish I would have simply bought at the overpriced price that I now don't have or don't own or did not invest in. Hopefully you learned something in this video and it gave you something to think about. If you did enjoy the content, make sure to hit the like button down below. It really helps. And make sure to consider subscribing as well. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.